Okay, so my bearded dragon was getting a little bit jealous that the two cats in the house have shown up in um, a video each at this point, and that he hasn't had his uh, time to shine. So this is Trent, and he will be joining me for this particular lecture video. Okay, so this video is going to get into a single um, section of chapter 10, uh, where we introduce the idea of inertia. And we'll talk about what this idea, um, uh, the moment of inertia, and not just this idea of inertia that we had talked about back in chapter 4 with Newton's laws, but getting into more understanding of how we can use an object's shape to help us determine how easy it is to rotate. So the first, um, the first lecture video from chapter 10 we revisited chapter two material in the context of rotation. We saw how rotational kinematics problems work once we've identified angular acceleration. In this lecture video, we are going to be considering how chapter four um, shows up in these rotational problems. So let's say that we have a um, stick with a mass at the end. So let's say that there's this big mass at the end and we're trying to get it to rotate. So what will happen based on us pushing on that mass if it, is, if it has a central fixed axis? We basically will let it rotate around, but it will rotate faster if we push it harder, and it will rotate slower if we push it less. So let's think about what that actually means in um, equation form. So with this mass on a stick problem, we have the mass m, here's the axis of rotation, and so it will be rotating. If we are pushing, so let's say that that really is the only major force acting on this, we are pushing with a force that is equal to mass times acceleration, and it is important to note, let me switch colors, that we know from chapter, um, we know from chapter nine, where are you going, buddy? We know from chapter nine that torque is equal to the perpendicular force times the distance to the axis. So with this new, um, with this new system, then what we have is that this perpendicular force, we have the torque is equal to this perpendicular force, ma, times the distance to the axis. But we also know that r alpha is equal to a. And so we can plug that in. And let me switch back to purple now at the end here. And we get that torque is equal to m r alpha times r. So we can group those r's together. We get m r squared times alpha. Okay, so not all that exciting a derivation. We have this key idea from chapter four, this key idea from chapter nine, and this new understanding of um, angular acceleration. But the result that we get, which is on the next slide, the result that we get is torque equals mass times radius squared um, times this angular acceleration that we have. And so what we end up with is something that looks really similar to our big chapter four idea, that force is mass times acceleration, and torque, which is kind of a rotational equivalent of force, is equal to mr squared times the angular acceleration, the rotational equivalent of acceleration. Okay, but what happens if we have two sticks? Even if we only push on one, what we would be able to find, and with a large blackboard I would um, show this a little bit better, but it's not worth the time here, what we would find is that if we have two masses, each a different distance away um, on that rotating object, we would have to consider that both of them are being caused to rotate, 
And so M1 R squared, uh, R1 squared and M2 R2 squared both have to be considered um, when we are figuring out what our torque is able to um, accomplish. If we had four sticks rotating, like the picture here, or eight, or 16, or a million, we would still be able to add up every single one of those terms. That hopefully seems a little bit unrealistic and unsustainable, and it is. Instead, what we're going to do is instead of just adding up every single small mass and just writing it out forever and ever, we're going to define this new idea of moment of inertia, where the moment of inertia uses the capital letter I for inertia, and it is equal to the sum of all of the MR squared terms. So this fancy sigma symbol here um, is the symbol for a sum, and it means that no matter what the shape looks like, no matter how many masses on sticks, we can just add up all of those MR squared ideas together. So what this means then is we can replace that thing in parentheses, no matter if it's one stick or two or 18, with this idea of I, and now we have the big key idea from this portion of the um, chapter, that torque is the moment of inertia times the angular acceleration. Okay, so I'm gonna leave this slide up while I put him back. He's clearly um, done being my um, assistant. But read through this and um, the video will get, this part will get taken out. Um, but read through this because this is the key idea from this portion of the chapter. Okay, so there's an exact analogy between the force equaling mass times acceleration and the torque equaling moment of inertia times angular acceleration, which helps us to recognize that this new idea of moment of inertia is really the rotational equivalent of mass. It is telling us how easy is it to rotate an object um, in the same way that mass kind of tells us how easy it is to pick up an object, in a sense. So this example here on the slide um, is the first one from this section that has its own example video. So we will see how these new ideas um, play out and how we can um, identify the moment of inertia and how we can use it in problem solving. So make sure to watch that example video next. The other thing to comment on if we think back to this idea of millions of masses on sticks is if we have some actual extended object, some extended shape like this um, whiteboard eraser, this is not a mass on a stick. If I wanted to rotate it around um, its center here, it still has a moment of inertia that we can think about, but it's not so easy as just adding up a bunch of MR squared terms. Instead of a finite sum, we would have to do an integral. And that means that calculus is involved here. We aren't doing calculus in our class, but we can use the results that come from calculus for a couple of really common shapes. The three that are going to show up the most often in our problem solving are a flat disk. So if we think about a um, wheel that is spinning or a turntable or a merry-go-round, a flat like um, playground merry-go-round, it's a flat disk. If we think about a solid sphere, um, then rotating that would involve um, mass distributed in a different way. And a hoop, if we have an empty hoop and we're rotating it around its um, center point, then all of the mass is the same physical distance away from the center. And so the full mass times the full radius squared makes sense for that hoop if we think about that um, process. So this slide has a whole bunch of common shapes listed. We do not have to memorize those, but we do need to know to look them up in problem solving and probably write down those three common ones that I talked about in the previous slide, a hoop, a disk, and a solid sphere. It is also worth recognizing that when we're looking for a shape, it also matters uh, where we are rotating that um, shape around. So the, um, the set here contains a lot of the same ones from the previous slide, but if we look at B and C here, both of those are a, um, thin, a thin rod, kind of like a pen, 
But it is a different moment of inertia to rota rotate this thing around its end. So if it's uh, here and my finger's holding it, to rotate it around its end as it is to rotate it around the center. And so we not only need to know the shape that we're talking about, but we also need to figure out the axis of rotation, the same kind of axis of rotation we talked about back in chapter nine. We won't solve, um, like I said, these, are, these results come from calculus, so we won't be um, proving them or calculating them, um, but we will be using those results in problem solving. Okay, so let's go through on the whiteboard what it looks like when we have a shape that's a little bit less common, but is built out of objects that we can think about and look up. So the key thing with um, a more complex object is that we can have the moment of inertia of the system be a set of terms that are either masses on stick kind of problems or our um, common shapes. So here we have a turntable. The big yellow flat disk here is the turntable, which means we look up the moment of inertia of a disk, and has two small masses that are all a distance um, away from the center of rotation. And if we go back one slide, that's kind of like the mass on stick idea, or in this picture, it, it's called a particle, which is just a certain mass a certain distance away. So for this problem then, what we have is that the full moment of inertia, so the moment of inertia of the system, is equal to the moment of inertia of the disk plus the moment of inertia of mass one plus the moment of inertia of mass two. Okay, so for this system then, so the full moment of inertia, for a disk, if we go back and look for a um, solid cylinder or disk, then we're told that it's one half mr squared if it is rotating around the center, which that turntable is rotating around the center. If we look at the mass um, that's a certain distance away from the center, then that's just that small mass times the distance squared and the other term, same idea here, the small mass times the distance squared. Okay, so what we have is the mass of the turntable is three kilograms. The full radius of the turntable is 30 centimeters. We must turn that into meters. And so 30 centimeters, 100 centimeters in one meter means we have 0.3 meters, so 0 0.3 squared, okay? The first small mass is 2 uh, times 20 centimeters is 0.2, and that's squared. And then we have a separate additional mass that is the same overall term. And so when we calculate this then, We have that this first portion is 0 0.135. And each of those small masses is 0.08. It's another 0.08. And so the total, we just add them together. And we get, oops. Okay, we get 0 0.295. We get 0 0.295, and if we look at the units that went into it, it's mass units times distance units squared, so it's kilograms 
meters squared. So 0.295 kilograms times meters squared. So the pictures on the slide, normally I would draw it, but I'm low on space. And so the moment of inertia of the whole system rotating it the way that it is shown um, is that number we calculated. We will see this come up a couple of times in assignments and eventual quizzes, exams, and whatnot. We need to recognize that if we have a complex shape, the moment of inertia is just multiple terms added together. The same way that when we had four masses on sticks, we just had m1r1 squared, m2r2 squared, m3r3 squared, and m4r4 squared. Okay. So this example... Um, which has its own example video, example 10D, is going to show us how we can use these extended shape moment of inertia terms to do problem solving in this section of the chapter. So if we apply a force, how will that disc respond? How will it rotate? So we'll see that full example video um, in, a separate, in a separate video. This one too shows us um, a little bit more complex of a problem here. This example with two objects means we have to look at both objects separately, but then connect them by having this understanding that they have to move in the same kind of way, and the tension on either end of the same string is the same number value. This is showing us what the objects tied together problems from chapter 4 look like now that we have rotation ideas as well. Out of all of the examples we've seen so far um, in our slides for chapter 10, this is probably one of the toughest, but we will have a full video for it and we'll talk through all of the possible sticking points, so make sure that you watch that um, coming up pretty soon here. The next time that we um, have a lecture video, we will be finishing up the chapter uh, and it will be kind of revisiting all of the other um, sections of the book that we've seen so far. Energy is something that we have seen quite recently. Momentum is something we have seen quite recently. And we'll get to see how those problems um, can also be done here in Chapter 10. So I will see you in the next one.